Welcome back to the Bison Workshop. I'm Bob. And today we're going to go ahead and uh, f do a second video. And I've got the, um, the sump pump in there saving right now, getting ready to upload it. But while I was waiting for that, I figured I'd go ahead and show you the progress on the electromagnetic chuck. I think I've got my ducks in a row a little bit more. And there was several problems that needed to be overcome. Number one, everybody see me make this switch. Although it is a nice switch, and it does work really well. The problem I have with this is it's just too awkward to use. You know, I got to thinking about it after I made it, well, while I was making it. I had it in the back of my head that you guys didn't see while I was doing the video. I was doing this in the back, right back here. Y'all can't see back here. I got that place closed off. Everybody, you get enter, enter there, you don't come back out alive. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> I like this switch. It's just I don't like it for that. Um, that can be used for something else. And one day I'll have a place for it. Who knows? Maybe I can put it on a tractor. Uh, who knows? Maybe I know somebody with a tractor who needs one. Anyway, um, so instead of me using that, I went ahead and took it out of line. And I found this that I had forgot I had. This is a battery disconnect switch. And it's got the two poles. And it's a pretty hefty switch. And um, it doesn't say on this what load it can handle. But it doesn't need to say what it'll handle. Because I know it'll handle. I say it'll handle. Uh, so I'm going to use this. And I'm just going to mount it on the bench somewhere that when I need to use it I can just uh, flip the switch but I need a light in line uh, I want a big red light one that cannot be missed that indicates that this thing is on uh, I do not want to leave this on for any time any length of time uh, just long enough to do my work until eventually I get used to it and comfortable with it. So this is the switch that we're going to use and I forgot I had this. <clears throat> when I first got my truck it kept draining my battery dead overnight. Just one night. And I kept charging it and it kept running them dead. Even while I was driving it, was, it wasn't charging. So I finally got it fixed. I took it to Battery Mart and got it fixed. But before I got it fixed, I decided to put this in there to turn the battery off. That way it wouldn't drain. And it worked. But it caught me a few times where, you know, I was traveling a long way and the battery wasn't keeping up with it. So when they fixed it, I went ahead and took this back out of line because I didn't need it no more. And I just never took it out from under the hood in front of the radiator. So the other day I decided to go out there and take it off and clean it up and now I've got my switch. So now let me show you what the other problem we have. The other problem that we have is I poured this all in one session and yes it did turn out okay. The only problem is it shrank. It got really hot. This whole thing was really hot because all this stuff got hot. And I put a fan here to blow on it to cool it down. Well, I think I cooled it down too fast and caused it to shrink. And it shrunk to the point where, let me show you what I can do. I can take a razor blade and go down inside that all the way around. All the way around. I can go all the way down in it. Now, yes, it's not going to go nowhere. Because this is welded to this box. 
but I don't want that there. So I'm going to have to re-pour, but use it just a little bit and have it flow down inside here. So, uh, we're gonna go ahead and mix this up some of that epoxy and put in this hole. So now we've got this mixed up. And I just mixed up that much, not much in there. Not a very big crack. And we're going to try to pour that so that it'll flow down in that crack. All right, guys, we're done milling it as far as we're going to mill it, and my mill needs to be trimmed because it's cutting deeper on this side than it is on that side, so it needs to be trimmed in. Ever since it jumped on me, it ain't been right. So we're just filing this edge off.
All right, so now all I gotta do is clean her up, wire wheel the outside of it, and if any of you guys decide to make one of these, don't cut the 45. Um, the reason that's a bad idea is because this here is almost as wide as the opening in your vise on the mill. Now I'm probably never going to use this on the mill. I could if I needed to, but the problem is I have to put a parallel underneath this to make sure that this thing's setting straight. So yeah, this one I can use in the mill. Uh, I just wish that I had, what I should have done was welded or bolted a solid one on it, but uh, you live and you learn. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to try to buff some of these swirls out of that. Alright, so we're just going to sand on that a little bit. And... I'm using, I think this is 180. Yeah. So we're going to try to sand this out. I don't think I'm going to get them all. Because I really don't want this to go down too deep. So, I mean, it don't matter. I just prefer to have them deep scratches out of it. So, let's try polishing that thing. With a green scratcher all right so now the head is done uh, we just got to throw a coat of paint on the bottom side of it and this part here I'm just going to re-blue it because uh, I believe that was done with bluing. I might just blue the whole thing but the head part is done. It's got the Bison Workshop etched on it and I almost scratched that one off. Hey, Bison Workshop. That was etched on there. That wasn't stamped. So, probably shouldn't have scratched on it so much on this side because I almost scratched it clear off. And it, I did it with that. So, Now we just got to mount it, or mount the switch, because this is going to stay at the vise. I'm not putting it anywhere else but here. So uh, let me gather, get my bearings together, and uh, we'll be back.